The Princess Bride is one of my favourite movies of all time, and unfortunately, unlike some or most, I did not have the pleasure of watching it as a child. I only discovered it myself as a teen and fell deeply in love with this story. And it made me feel like I was at home. It made me feel like I had nothing to worry about. And it dragged me into a world that's so unlike my own. And made me feel just like being in a homely environment where I have nothing to be afraid of. And so whenever I feel a little anxious or whenever I feel like I'm a little sad, The Princess Bride is one of the movies that picks me back right up and makes me feel like life isn't too bad. <laughs> and so I thought, what are the books that I would like to recommend to these characters who make me feel so great? And what do I feel will suit them best? And hopefully you get some recommendations based on these characters that you love so much as well. So for our first character is Wesley, who is our character that is the farm boy who fell in love with Buttercup and went into the sea, uh, went across the sea to seek his fortune and unfortunately died. Maybe. No, no. Mm -hmm. Anyways, the book that I like to recommend him is uh, Red Rising by Pierce Brown and this whole series Honestly, I think fits Wesley really well because Wesley is a brave character who would do anything for Buttercup despite the fear that comes behind it. And I think that matches our main character, Daryl, um, very, very well. And so the story of Red Rising follows our character, Daryl, who is actually a red. And in this society, they are differentiated by different colors and he is a red. And he's actually mining Mars. And why is he doing that? He's trying to prepare Mars for the future generations of people who will stay there and so that they can live life, you know, well because Earth is not doing too great. And soon he realizes that actually he's been tricked and the government has been lying to him and that all rates are actually the lowest caste in this system and that the fact that he is actually essentially a slave and mining for Mars and everyone is actually living great lives in different planets already and that Mars is perfectly livable but they're making use of them, you know, to be essentially slaves. And you see how he joins a rebellion and goes against the odds of everything to be a gold the highest member of the cast and really push for what he wants in order to make sure that his loved ones are safe and happy and all on the fact that his wife believed in this rebellion so you know in that case he reminds me oddly of Wesley I'm not the biggest fan of Red Rising but I feel like it's an incredible series that is fast paced and that most people will love and I think Wesley will enjoy a story from Daryl's perspective yeah and for our next character is Buttercup. And, you know, strangely enough, there's a book already written about her. And that's actually Tress of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. And this book is actually based off uh, The Princess Bride and how Brandon Sanderson feels it should go in his own words and his own ways. And Tress is a rendition of Buttercup in Buttercup you know, had more guts to go out into sea and search for her loved one. Yeah, and you know, Buttercup will see Tress and she will see her with a lot of admiration. It's not that Buttercup doesn't have agency per se, but you know, she likes it a little. And But she's incredibly brave still in her own way because she lacks martial arts skills. Or she's, she lacks the ability to fight for herself and stuff. I mean like physically fight, but she has a bravery and a sense of strength in her mind and that she will see Tress and admire her and feel like she should be more like her and I think Tress would be a perfect book for her to feel like that is something I should aim for that is someone I could be and that I really am in my head I just had to put it into action yeah and Tress of the Emerald Sea follows Tress uh, who lives uh, in this magical world and her, her loved one too, her lover, uh, goes out to sea to seek his fortune and mysteriously must have disappeared or died or something along those lines. And she feels like, hey, 
I'm not just gonna wait around for him to come home or he may be dead. I don't know. I'm gonna out to search for him. I'm gonna make sure he's okay. And that's what Tress does and that's what the story is. Uh, yeah. And the next character is my favorite character, my own personal favorite character, who is Inigo Montoya. And the book I'll be recommending him is actually The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. You know why? It's because The Rage of Dragons is a story about a guy whose father dies because he got healed by some rich ass guy and he's like I hate you I'm gonna take revenge on my father's death you killed my father prepare to die hmm who does that sound like Inigo Montoya and so Inigo Montoya will probably read his story and feel like this sense of passion towards him and feel like he should root for him even though he doesn't make the most smartest decisions he'll be like yes I get you I get why you did that I love my father too and I want to avenge him and so, I totally support you and your story. And I think that's why it's the most appropriate recommendation for him. And the next character that I like to focus on is Fezzik, who is my second favorite character. He's our little soft, gentle giant. Even though he's huge, he's gentle, and he's cute. And the book I would like to recommend him is actually The Entirety of the Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien. Why? Because Lord of the Rings just makes me feel at home. It makes me feel a sense of unity, a sense of strength that comes in numbers. And despite everyone being different and everyone having different goals, they all can come together to achieve great things. And I think Fezzik as a gentle giant has always been seeking somewhere to call home. And you know, he's being forced to fight because he's a giant and people make use of him, but all he wants is just peace. And I think reading Lord of the Rings will make him feel like he belongs somewhere. It will make him feel like, you know, I just have to find the right crew of people to be with and, and I'll feel like I'm at home. Like he feels like when he's, that's how he feels like when he's with, you know, Inigo and how he feels like when he's with Wesley. And he's so charming and I feel like a story such as Lord of the Rings, which is just as charming as him, will suit him so well. And the homeliness that it provides will make him feel like there's a society that he can belong to as well. Yeah. And the next character that I would like to talk about is Vincini, a terribly, terribly little man that is incredibly clever. And I think the book that will suit him best is actually Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wang. And the reason why I think this is appropriate is because the two main characters are essentially the same, right? Vincini, incredibly clever, lacks a bit of social skills. He's a little bit uptight and a stuck-up. And so is Siona or Sconia, our main character, in Blood of a Bright Haven. So in Blood of a Bright Haven, we're following Siona as she um, takes the test to be the very first female mage, high mage of some sort. And no one has ever done it before, so she's incredibly stressed, but she knows she's capable and she's also a little bit stuck up despite all the challenges that are put across to her. And her her society is incredibly misogynistic, obviously, because no female has ever been given a chance to really do proper magic, and she's the first woman to do so. And she meets Tomil, who is a refugee that lives in her city. He comes from the outskirts of her city. And anyway, the point is the two of them will soon discover there's a conspiracy behind the magic system that runs this city and how they need to stop it and how they need to confront what they know about their lives already and what it really what is really happening before their eyes yeah and so the final characters that I want to talk about is actually Miracle Max and his wife Valerie the two comedians of the show they were incredibly funny and it's just they 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 just have a way with humor that just makes it so incredibly good. Like whatever they say just cracks me up so hard. And the two of them are really a dynamic duo, which is why I'm recommending them The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, following another dynamic duo going on crazy chaotic adventures across the universe. Our main character house? Our main character whose name I've forgotten has got his house towed away or some sort or boodles or some shit but point is he got destroyed because they're building a highway and his house is in the way and he's incredibly upset but he meets an alien who brings him across the galaxy and it's incredibly chaotic in 
all sense of the word. And it's also incredibly funny because of how chaotic it is. It's just really nonsensical, like the two of them, Miracle Max and Valerie. And this book was clearly appropriate for their relationship. Yeah, so that comes to the end of all the Princess Bride characters that I wanted to talk about. And if you're a Princess Bride fan, I totally recommend you a book, which is the memoir written by our beloved Wesley, covering the stories of the Princess Bride and the fact uh, and the stories that happen on set and the casting and everything, and includes him narrating the book himself, and it includes all the additional actors and actresses that were a part of this movie and their commentaries and how they felt about the movies and their experience working on set at the Princess Bride. And it's just so heartening to listen to their stories and, and their incredible chemistry with each other. And if you are a fan, this will definitely hit the spot for you. So thank you so much for watching. I, I hope these recommendations were useful to you other than these fictional characters that I'm recommending it to. But don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one.